Good evening. Today's quote is by Aristotle. Well begun is half done. Well begun is half done. Today's word is uh, soliloquy, uh, an utterance or discourse by a person who is talking to himself or herself. Uh, Hamlet's uh, soliloquy begins with to be or not to be. Uh, exercise 6.1, sum number 28. 1 plus x equal to 1 plus log bc to the base a. See, we want to express 1 as logarithm. Now here base of logarithm is a. So I write 1 as log a to the base a. What is log m plus log n? Log mn. So 1 plus x is log abc to the base a. So what is 1 upon 1 plus x? 1 upon log abc to the base a. But if I want to write log in the numerator, these two will be interchanged. So this is log a to the base abc. Now use this analogy. So it will be 1 upon 1 plus y. It will be log b to the base abc. And 1 upon 1 plus z will be what? Log c to the base abc. Now 1 upon 1 plus x plus 1 upon 1 plus y plus 1 upon 1 plus z will be what? Write down. Log a to the base abc plus log b to the base abc plus log c to the base abc. Now what is sum of the logarithm? If base is the same, it is logarithm of product so log ABC to the base ABC, but log of any number to the same base is 1. That's it. Now we discuss algebra of functions. Let A be subset of set of real numbers. Then the different operations on functions are defined as follows. The first one, this part is not at all difficult. The first one is sum of functions. Suppose f is a function from a to r, okay, and g is also a function from a to r, right? Then f plus g, f plus g from a to r, from a to r is defined as f plus g of x, which is equal to f of x plus g of x. In other words, what is uh, uh, sum of functions? What is rather function of sum? It is sum of functions. Similarly, what will be uh, f minus g x? Simple, it is f of x minus g of x. Okay, so this is about sum of functions, and then uh, I explain difference of functions. Then comes product of functions. Same, f dot g from a to r is defined as f of x into g of x. See, after this, we are going to discuss concept of composite function that is altogether different. This is what? This is product of functions. Now, this is for all. This is for all small x belonging to capital A. Okay. And then quotient of functions. Actually, I can say that f upon g of x is fx upon gx. And obvious condition on denominator is that g of x, that is denominator, should not be equal to zero. Because if denominator vanishes, then it is not defined. Finally, they have given scalar multiplication of a function. See, this is not at all difficult. In fact, uh, we use that and we uh, do not have that idea that we are using one particular theorem. So, kf from a to r, I can define this as kf of x 
is nothing but k f of x, right? And what is x? X belongs to set A. So this is about algebra of functions. Now we discuss the next important part that is nothing but, that is nothing but composition of uh, actually uh, the word composition is used, but generally we say composite functions. Of course, as it is composite, the process is called as composition. So we discuss that because usually we do not consider one function, we use combination of two or more functions. For example, log of sin x. This is not a simple function. Here two functions are involved, logarithmic and trigonometric. So they're composite or you may say composition. That is nothing but composite function. Now an important concept, composite function, let f from a to b and g from b to c be two functions and x be any element of the set a. Okay. Then clearly f of x will belong to b. I hope you agree with this. f of x will belong to b because what is f of x? It is value of the function and it belongs to codomain set for a function f from a to b. What is codomain? It is b. So f of x belongs to b. Now I say let y be equal to f of x. Okay. Now since b is the domain of the function g, and C is its codomain. Can I say, <coughs> sorry, can I say that G of Y belongs to C? Yes, I can. Suppose, suppose that function is defined as Z equal to G of Y. But what is Y? Y is F of X. And therefore, can I say that Z is nothing but G of f of x belonging to which set belonging to say c this shows that every element x of the set a i'll show this diagram again every element of the set a is related to one and only one element z g of f of x of the set c this gives rise to a function from set a to set c this function is called the composite of f and g. So you have to be very careful. Some students say this is composite of g and f. No, f first, then g. See, composite of f and g exist, but it is not g of f of x. When I say g of f of x, it is first f and then g. And therefore, this is what? This is composite of f and g. I hope this is clear to you. So if we denote this by H, then I can say that H is a function from A to C and it is given by what? H of X is nothing but G of F of X. See, if you pay attention, you won't find this difficult. For all X belonging to, I'm saying for all X. So belonging to which set? Set A. The composite of f and g is denoted by g o f. This is what composite of f and g. So if somebody asks you to define this composite, how will you define? You will have to say that this is the definition. If f from a to b and g from b to c are the two functions, then the composite of f and g is the function g o f from a to c and it is given by it is given by g o f of x this is the convention 
equal to g of f of x equal to what this is nothing but this is nothing but composite function for all i have already explained this symbol this is inverted a for all small x belonging to capital a note that gof denotes the composite of f and g likewise fog will denote what fog will denote the composite of g and f it may or may not exist we are not sure and even if it exist it may not be the same as gof i repeat this part we have written gof as composite of f and g similarly composite of g and f may exist it is denoted by fog even if both of them exist they need not be equal they can be but they need not be equal. okay so this is about composite function see uh, once we start solving problems uh, you will definitely understand this part remember in 11 standard we are going to discuss basics of calculus derivatives integration in fact integration is not there though we will discuss integration in short but in 12th standard derivatives starts with derivative of composite function in 11th standard we will be discussing simple functions but in 12th standard syllabus begins with derivatives of composite function so you should know the meaning of composite function now uh, exercise 6.2 first question if f of x is 3x plus 5 g of x is uh, 6x minus 1 then find f plus g x f minus g 2 f g 3 f upon g x and its domain okay so in the last part domain is also asked now this is not at all difficult first part f plus g x is what f x plus g x both the functions are given just add them so it is 9x plus 4 right um this is the first part now in the second part what is asked f minus g2 okay so we will find f2 and g2 separately or you may find this afterwards what is f2 f2 is value of the function f at x equal to 2 what is fx 3x plus 5 So it will be f two, three into two plus five, that is eleven. What is g of x? Six x minus one. It is given. So it will be g of two. It will be six into two minus one. It is again eleven. Therefore, f minus g of two. is nothing but f2 minus g2 that is 11 less 11 which is nothing but 0 so answer for the second part is nothing but 0 what is f of 3 value of the function at x equal to 3 so 3 into 3 plus 5 14 what is g of 3 find out six into three minus one seventeen so f of 3 into g of 3 so 14 into 17 so 17 fours are 16 and 3 238 238 is the product uh 
I hope you are getting this. What is fx? 3x plus 5. What is gx? 6x minus 1. See, we are going to call this as rational function. And rational function is defined provided denominator is not equal to 0. So, x should not be equal to 1 upon 6. So, what is domain? Domain of uh, f upon g of x such that x belongs to r, x not equal to 1 upon 6. Okay. Now, can you tell me domain of g upon f? See, for g upon f, it will be what? 6x minus 1 upon 3x plus 5. But 3x plus 5 should not be 0. Means x should not be minus 5 by 3. So, in that case, domain will be all real numbers except minus 5 by 3. Second question, let f from 2, 4, 5 to 2, 3, 6 and g be the function from 2, 3, 6 to 2, 4. These are given by f set of ordered pairs 2, 3, 4, 6, 5, 2 and g 2, 4, 3, 4, 6, 2. Write down g o f means what? Composite of f and g. So f first and then g. See, this is not at all difficult. Set a to set b. Now, they have given f as what? Ordered pairs 2, 3. So 2 associated with 3, 4, 6, 5, 2. Now g is a function from b to c. 2, 4. Uh, what is that? 2, 4. Yes, 2 associated with 4. Then 3 associated with 4. Yes, many 1 can also be a function. And then 6 associated with 2. Now, to find composite of f and g, that is g o f, it is a function from A to C. So every element of A is associated uniquely with an element of C. C. 2 is associated to 3, which in turn is associated to 4. So 2 associated with 4. 4 associated with 2, though via 6. 5 associated with 4, though via 2. So this is the composite of F and G. Okay. Otherwise, f is a function 2, 3, 4, 6 means f2 is 3, f4 is 6, f5 is 2. Now g is a function 2, 4, 3, 4, 6, 2. So g of 2 is 4, g of 3 is 4 and g of 6 is 2. Now what is asked? It is g of f of x. Now what is g of f of 2? f of 2 is 3. So ultimately g of 3. But g of 3 is 4 and so on. And that is why I say that this is the simplest method, arrow diagram. For this also, you will get full marks in exam. Sum number 3. If f of x equal to 2x square plus 3, g of x equal to 5x minus 2, then find f of g, g of f, f of f and g of g. Now, a part. What is asked? f of g of x. Do we know g of x? Yes, we do. So substitute means we have to find f of 5x minus 2. To find f of 5x minus 2, we mention f of x. f of x is given to be 2x square plus 3. What does this mean? This means whatever is written here, square it, multiply by 2 and add 3 to that. Here it is 5x minus 2. So square 5x minus 2, multiply by 2 and add 3 to it. Now tell me on simplification what you get. I'm omitting one step. What is 5x minus 2 square? It is 25x square 
minus 20x plus 4. So if multiplied by 2, I will directly write, I get 50x square minus 40x, right? Plus 8 plus 3, that is 11. And therefore, this is nothing but f of g of x. I hope this is clear to you. Now, can you tell me remaining three? What is B? You have to just substitute. I hope you remember that note. f of g of x not same as g of f of x. See, f of g of x is what? 50x square minus 40x plus 11. And here we are getting g of f of x as what? 10x square plus 13. Clearly, they are not equal. Okay? Good. So, I don't think this needs uh, any explanation. g of f of x put value of f of x. So we need g of this. For that, it is better if we mention g of x. See, after practice, you can directly write this, but this is just the second sum. So g of x is 5x minus 2. So it is g of 2x square plus 3, 5 times 2x square plus 3 minus 2. So comes out to be 10x square plus 13. Now C part is f of f of x f of x is 2x square plus 3, means we have to find what? f of 2x square plus 3. Now, fx is 2x square plus 3. So, it is f of 2x square plus 3. You have to be very careful. See the cursor. If this is x, square that, multiply by 2, add 3. So, square this. Just a minute. Uh, I have to write square of this. Okay. Square this, multiply it by 2, add 3. Now, the square of 2x square plus 3, it is 4x raised to 4 plus 12x square plus 9, multiplied by 2. So, 8x raised to 4 plus 24x square plus 18. But already 3 is there. What is 18 plus 3? 21. Then, g of g of x. What is g of x? 5x minus 2. So, we have to find g of 5x minus 2. Now, what is g of x? 5x minus 2. And therefore, what is g of 5x minus 2? See the cursor. g of x is 5x minus 2. Whatever is written here, multiply by 5, subtract 2. Here, what is written? 5x minus 2. Multiplied by 5, subtract 2. So, if you simplify, you get 25x minus 12. Right up. Now we discuss an important concept of inverse function. Now, f is a function from set A to set B. Can you tell me type of this function? This is 1, 1 and on 2. That is injective and surjective function. If the function f from a to b is 1, 1 and on to, can we think of a function from set b to set a? Yes. Why? Every element of the set b is uniquely associated with an element of the set a. And therefore, in this case, 
we can think of a function from set b to set a clearly it will be different from if suppose we denote it by g note that g is called as inverse of the function f and we write this as g is nothing but f inverse while writing this we have to write f raised to minus 1 but you have to read this as f inverse note that function possesses inverse if and only if it is 1 1 and on 2 suppose i include one element s is this a function from a to b yes f exists from a to b why every element of set a is uniquely associated with an element of the set b but if i ask you is there any function from b to a your answer should be no why because every element of the set b has no association s is not at all associated so function from b to a does not exist suppose i write one more element d associated with r is there any function from a to b yes it is many one many associated with one is also a function but is there any function from b to a no why because r is not uniquely associated r is associated with two elements so do function from a to b exist function from b to a does not exist and this function is what many one on to why on to i hope you remember these words why on to because the range pqr is codomain itself so it is on to but not one one it is many one and therefore it does not possess inverse okay so this not possible then d i will remove yes the function f from a to b is 1 1 and on to and therefore function from b to a exists and it is nothing but inverse of the function so how will you actually define inverse function same thing if don't write if f is a function if f is a function from a to b and it is 1 1 and on to then corresponding to every element of b we can find a unique element of a which defines a function from b to a called the inverse of the function f it is denoted by f inverse by writing f raised to minus 1 but you have to read this as f inverse from b to a is that clear so can i say that for f if domain is a and codomain or i can directly say range is b then for f inverse domain and range will be interchange that is domain of f inverse will be now set b and what will be the range it will be set a is that clear so this is nothing but inverse of a function now this is interesting if i ask you what is composite of f and g see f means a to b and then g from b to a so g of f is a function from a to a similarly what is composite of g and f begin with g g is a function from b to a so g from b to a and then f from a to b so composite of g and f that is f of g is what it is a function from b to b only so can i say that g of f of x is nothing but x because from x we come to y and then from y again we come back to x so g of f of x is x for every x belonging to a and what is f of g of y from y we get x and then from x again we come to y and therefore f of g of y is y for all y belonging to b finally 
if y equal to fx possesses inverse then it is written as x equal to f inverse y while writing we write f raised to minus 1 but while reading we say x equal to f inverse y i hope this is clear to you so these two are equivalent in fact if you put x equal to f inverse y here then what is f of f inverse y it is nothing but y and substitute y equal to fx here so it is f inverse of fx it is nothing but x followed so this is about inverse function i think uh, uh, we'll stop here in the next lecture we'll be solving some some inverse function i think uh, it is given in fourth one we are asked to verify whether f and g are inverse functions of each other or not